A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations, but as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves to slaves, of, slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the gift of your word, how it challenges us and leads us closer to you. And may I become the lesser so you become the greater in this message. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so we are starting a sermon series today for the month of July uh, that's going to be focusing just on this letter to the Romans uh, from the Apostle Paul. And uh, it, why are we spending a whole month on it? Because uh, Paul's theology is really... Uh, really forms us of how one of the, the probably the interpreter of Jesus Christ. Um, there's been many more after him, Augustine and many others who have formed who we are, whether we're Catholics or Protestants. Uh, but the Apostle Paul obviously is responsible for a huge part of the New Testament. So we're going to spend four weeks just on Romans, um, which is short for this, this text, the letter to the Romans is really Paul's, it really embodies his, his theology, his beliefs. And he has complex beliefs, he has multi-layered beliefs, and he revisits these themes over and over again in this letter to the Romans. So it behooves us to spend a good four weeks digging into what he's talking about just for about four chapters here. Um, our lectionary supports it, so all the other readings, if you go across the street and want to do a double header, uh, you will hear the psalm and the gospel um, and the Hebrew scripture, um, also known as the Old Testament, that will support these readings. But we are going to focus on this. And so our sermon series for July, we're going to call this, Who Do You Want to Serve? Who Do You Want to Serve? And today we're going to talk about an awareness of, of, of who are we obedient to in our lives. Um, and, and then next week, we're going to get into, so when we become aware of the different gods with a small g of who we're obedient to at times, who we become slaves to at times, how do we, what do we do with that? How do we overcome those temptations? What do we do? Because let's look at this. Before this reading that Tammy just read, before this, Paul says to, please, there, all right, he says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You are dead to sin. So no matter what you believe sometimes, no matter what this world might tell you sometimes, no matter how you feel about your own humanity sometimes, you are not just this sinful being who was a slave to sin, and the, the devil just made me do it, and oh my God, I'm just a flawed human being, and I'm just broken, I'm always going to make mistakes. 
False. You've been reborn. You have the power of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, inside of your heart now. You are a child of God who's been blessed, consecrated, and sanctified by the King of Kings. You are anointed. You are holy. You are God's. You're not Satan's. You're not sin's. You're none of that. Paul is speaking to a community in Rome who just been baptized, who struggle with their identity, and he's saying, hold up, before you go anywhere with who you are as a Christian, following this guy Jesus, you need to know who you are and whose you are. You need to know your identity, and you need to claim your identity. Because just because we did an altar call, or just because we got baptized, or just because we got confirmed, that's just being born. You're, you're, you're just a fresh baby being born. Now you've got to mature. You've got to mature as a Christian. You've got to read your scripture every day. You've got to get on your knees and pray every day. You've got to start this relationship with God because it is a relationship, a growing relationship. You are marrying Jesus in your life if you so choose. Who do you want to serve? As Paul says, who do you want to be a slave to? You want to be a slave to your fears. You want to be a slave to your anxieties. Do you want to be a slave to temptation? Do you want to be a slave to that term being like, ah, I just had a bad day, I'm just a human being, I made a mistake, I did this. Those things are going to happen. Absolutely, we are human. But, but, but Paul is trying to open us up saying, you, there's much more in store for you as a, as a Christian. Because why? Let's go to the context here. Always got the context. What Paul is saying is before, we were slaves to the law. As Jews, that's our roots, we are all slaves to the law. The law, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and the Ten Commandments. We know the Ten Commandments, right? Those were the law, that we followed the law. Now the thing is, that law was given to us because we were just all crazy little children of God running around not knowing how to act. And God says, well, just, just, just follow these laws, all right? Don't eat pork, it's going to kill you. Trust me, just don't do it. There's this thing called trichinosis, and when you guys grow up and learn how to get a refrigerator, then don't worry about that law. But right now, don't eat pork, right? It gives us all these little laws and big laws. Then he has the big ten that we know, right? We watch those. But you know what happens with us as human beings? When people give us rules, we have this innate ability just to want to break them. Like we, it's kind of like exciting. Like Augustine, who's like probably the most, like Augustine, who after Paul is the, the, another, the next big interpreter of, of, of Christianity. If you haven't read one of his books, like Confessions, great place to start. Um, he talks about, <laughs> as a kid, his parents told him, don't go eat those pear trees in the backyard because we save those for the nice company when they come over. These are beautiful pears. Please don't touch them. It's the first thing he did the next day, him and his friends. And they didn't even taste them. They didn't even want them. You know what they did? They just threw them at the cows because they thought it was fun. Like, let's go throw them at the cows. He said, I don't even know why I did it. There was just some kind of inner rebellion. Like, I was told not to do it. So I went to go did it. I wanted to see what would happen if I did do it, right? We have this thing as humans that we kind of always want to break boundaries. Sometimes that's good. Like we say, people say you can't go to the moon. We're like, no, we're human beings. Let's go to the moon, right? People say you can't go to Mars. Now we're like, no, we're going to go to Mars. But then people say, don't eat from that pear tree. We take the pear and we throw it at cows. So there's this thing about us as humans when we get laws or rules, we try to break them. So the law of God at a certain point stopped really working. It became about obedience and disobedience. And when you break the laws, then you're afraid of this judge who's going to judge you. So now our relationship with God just becomes about judgment. I broke the law. Dad's going to be mad at me. Father God's going to be mad at me. I put my hand in the cookie jar. Now I'm going to get in trouble. And it's all external. These laws are external. So what Paul is saying is, you're not slaves to the law anymore, which, some, which can lead to sin. You're not slaves to sin. You are now slaves to God Almighty, to Jesus Christ, who no longer is an external relationship. Our relationship with God is now internal. It's gifted to us. It is now a relationship. Now we begin to develop in our history, and our growth with God, now God is saying, I don't want you just worshiping laws. I just want you to be in a relationship with me, to be in love with me. And not just love me. I want you to fall in love with me 
I'm going to bring my son who's going to come and make a personal relationship with you and he's going to show you what that love really means about to give himself over to you and to this world and take all this funky stuff you have, these thoughts you have about yourself, these limiting beliefs you have about yourself that I'm just sinful, that I'm just disobedient, that, I, that I'm not really good, that I'm selfish, that I'm lustful, that I'm a drunk, that I can't pay my rent, that I'm not a good parent. I want you to take all that junk and like Jesus, I'm going to bury it in the ground. I'm going to put it on this cross and it's just going to die. As Paul says, you are dead to sin. When we are baptized, we go into the water. It is a death-like imagery. We're going into the water. Our former lives are dying, and we are being reborn. We are being a resurrection of a new life that we are now ruled and created by God. You are now a servant to the good Lord God, who is a perfect, loving, omniscient God who's now transforming your heart. This is not a philosophy. These are not ideals that we live by. This is a cosmic shift of humanity. This is now not God, all other gods. There's just this way that you ruled, you look to the sky, you look to laws, you look to rules. Now God is coming in your hearts. Jesus Christ is working in your hearts and transforming your heart if you choose to be a servant to him and to follow him above all things. So we need to be aware of, first, who do we sometimes serve? There's many other little gods in our lives that we tend to sometimes obey. I had a time in my life where I was obedient to to anxiety. Woke up every morning, so anxious about life. So many things going on. I followed that God. That steered my life of how I constructed, what the decisions I made, the choices I made, how my mind operated was anxiety. It's fear, right? But glory be to God, also through a good therapist, <laughs> God has many angels, of putting God, say, I'm worshiping this, this God with a small g. It's not even real. You know, anxiety is not even real. You're living in the future. The future's not even here, right? So I'm worshiping this God that's not even real. How about living to the good one, Jesus Christ, who is saying, I am going to gift you and give you everything that you need in your life. And if we look at Paul's example, he says slave. Back then, a slave is different. You have a master, a master who provides everything that you need, your food, your housing, everything that you're going to need in your life. Do we trust God to give us everything and anything we need in our lives, to heal our hearts, to provide the love that we need, to to heal relationships, to put a roof over our heads, to put food in our body, to provide salvation, to heal us? Do we really trust that Jesus loves us more than anything in the world? And Paul is drawing a line in the sand today in this letter that you are no longer obedient to sin. It doesn't run your life. There's going to be times that it feels like it does. Temptation, lust, anger, bitterness. That's when you've got to turn internally and say, Jesus, I know you're working in my heart. You can do things that I can never ask or imagine. I know you can lead me out of this. That was my prayer. That was my prayer. God led me to a good therapist, worked with him for about three, four, five months, got my mind right. Whew! Reborn. I'll tell you about a reborn, rebirth process. Glory, glory be to God. And it's every day saying, when I feel those thoughts coming in that are steering me off course, they're leading me towards worshiping a God of fear, worshiping a little God of, of anxiety. It's like, whoa, 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 where am I going? Like Paul says, you, that is not my God. My God is a God who loves me, who's got the best thing for me, who knows my future, who's really sculpted me to be his servant, and one of generosity, one of selflessness, one of love, one of healing, one of forgiveness. That is the God that I serve. Because there's going to be many gods that are going to try to pull you off track. So this week, let's just first start this week. Be aware of our own personal gods that we sometimes serve a little bit too much. Sin comes. And that's fine. But when do those kind of mistakes and temptations become little mini gods that we serve? What are, what's our sources of bondage in our life? Is it alcohol? Cruising around on the internet late at night? Anger, bitterness, lack of forgiveness for someone in your life that's just becoming toxic inside of your hearts? Remember, forgiveness is not about forgiving the other person. It's about healing your heart, letting go of darkness. All right? Where are those little gods that might be having a little bit too much real estate in your heart that you need Jesus to come in and say, no, no, Jesus, you're my God. You take over. 
This is a daily walk that we do as Christians. We are having many revivals every day of God coming into our lives. All right? We had kids get up at our youth group uh, um, when we were in Colorado, get up and do altar calls. They were confirmed. They knew Jesus, but they felt a moment, an experiential moment of saying, I'm feeling you, Jesus, in my heart. This is changing. Something's different. Something is going on here. I'm worshiping you, and I feel you moving in my heart. I'm going to get up and stand up and claim this. I'm in. Right? We can always have that. You can do as many altar calls as you want. <laughs> I did too before. <laughs> You just think they're talking to you, and you're like, yes, I want to claim this life, because it's, it's powerful. Yes, it's cerebral, but sometimes it's, it's emotional. It's experiential. This is not a law that we follow. This is an experiential relationship of God working in us. So next week, Paul's going to talk to us, what do we do with this sin that just nags at us? It just nags, and we feel so sinful, and we feel like, I can't beat this, God. I can't beat this. This thorn in my side that Paul talks about. So we'll talk about that next week. But first, this week, let's just focus on awareness. That's always half the battle. Awareness of those gods. Don't beat yourself over it. Don't get guilty. Blah, blah, blah. Just we're lifting it up to Jesus. So you know where Jesus needs to take over that real estate in your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen.